1983, a 21-year-old Gabe Newell had dropped out of Harvard University and joined a company called Microsoft. He was designated to work on some project they called Windows. Over the next 13 years, Gabe would serve as a producer of the first three Windows releases. Windows 1.0 in 1985, Windows 2.0 in 1987, and Windows 2.1x in 1988. Additionally, in 1993, he would lead the development of porting a very important game to Windows 95, Doom. A port that is credited to be responsible for making Windows itself a viable gaming platform. Two years later, in 1995, a fellow Microsoft colleague, Michael Abrash, would leave the company and join id Software to work on a new game they were making, Quake. Inspired by Michael's move into the video game industry, Gabe Newell and his colleague Mike Harrington left Microsoft together in 1996 to form their own video game studio. But what about the name? How about Fruit Fly Ensemble? Or maybe Rhino Scar? No. Valve. Valve LLC was founded in the summer of 1996, based in Kirkland, Washington, five miles away from where the duo worked previously. At first, Gabe and Mike had an idea for a submarine game. They believed they could pull off some nice underwater visuals, but because they had connections with the team at id, specifically John Carmack and Michael Abrash, they managed to get their hands on the Quake engine. With this new powerhouse of a game engine with them, the possibilities were endless. Gabe and Mike were technical enough to use it by themselves, but of course they had amassed enough wealth at Microsoft that they could hire new talent for their new video game studio. With everything in its place, the team started development on two projects, Quiver and Prospero. Quiver, as you know, became Half-Life, but what was Prospero? It was a very different game and it's shrouded in mystery. They wanted to release it shortly after Half-Life, but it never did. The game had elements of exploring different worlds, having a variety of different worlds, combat via psionic powers and much, much more. The main character called the Librarian, or Aleph, would travel to many different worlds. In a way, we can say that Prospero was kind of a predecessor to what we call Steam today. It's a strange comparison, but there are some similarities. Later in the game's development, it was turned into a massively multiplayer game, an MMO. The plans were to release Prospero with a mix of Valve and user-created worlds that the main character could enter into from the library, or the hub. All of the game's worlds were supposed to be stored in the library. Players could interact with other players using a built-in friends list or friend finder system, download new maps from within the game, and go into new worlds through the hub. Additionally, there was a character called Miranda, created by artist Les Betterly. He describes the design as just coming up with art to get the creativity started. When Mark Laidlaw was hired in 1997, his job was to consolidate the storyline for Half-Life, but most of his time was spent on writing the story for Prospero. But after all that development, and after Half-Life released, Prospero was lost to time. <laughs>